Hey guys. Okay, so we're starting with uh, our next talk now. Uh, our friends from Aztec Labs are going to tell us how to bring our own secrets, but also shout them out loud. So please. I'll... Thank you. Yeah, I'm. Is that good? I'm a DevRel engineer at Aztec Labs. I'm very glad to be here. You're timing, you're timing every um, time. So I have like seven minutes at a time. I'm going to tell you who you are. Right? And you are now in the like, uh, just a bit confusing, so I'm going to try it again. You are a transit state in space time, which is also not very, um, uh, doesn't make much sense. So, okay, I'm going to. We start again, uh, start from the beginning. Um, how can you bring your own secrets to this place, but yet shout them out loud? So let's, let's start like a proper conference, uh, talk of the agenda, we have an agenda. And so we're gonna talk about UTXOs. Uh, why UTXOs, why do we love UTXOs? And then I'm gonna go back and tell you who are you uh, and why. And then uh, we're going to be talking about this kind of this world's most expensive timestamp machine. Uh, and then, yeah, how can you actually keep your secrets? So why, 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 but why this UTX so thing? Why are we, why do we care so much? And most of all, what is a UTX so for those who don't know what, what it is? So I'm going to give this brief explanation. So let's imagine that Alice has a 20 euro bill and I mean maybe she's in Lisbon or something, she wants to grab a coffee from this person, Bob, so the coffee costs like five euro, right, right these days. Uh, and so she she pays five euro to that to Bob, but she only has 20 euro bill. So she will give 20 euro to Bob and then Bob will give her a change. Okay? So this five euro bill that he now has. Hello. Um, who, who, who is this? Who am I? That's what, what the bill is thinking. Of. And he figures out that he is actually an incoming transaction that wasn't yet spent. So, I mean, if you, if you open your wallet, you have a bunch, a bunch of bills. I hope you have a lot of bills in your wallet. Uh, all of them are actually transactions that were spent sent to you, they were spent by someone else by sending them to you, and you are they are basically waiting to be spent. And the way you count your money, your balance, is just send them all, all up. And this is how Bitcoin works. This is what we call the UTXO model. So the, the change is also just a bunch of transactions waiting to be spent. Actually, in blockchain, we would do it a little bit like um, yeah, um, you would kind of burn the the burn the the notes and then create new notes for uh, your receiving. Yeah, but that's obviously not possible in the real world. So great, why do we move away from this? Right, if it works works for Bitcoin, then why why should we change? Uh, then. First one is because sequencing. Sequencing is not, not great. Like order matters. Because if Alice pays Bob and then Bob pays Charlie, you can just do them in random order. You have to do it in, in, in one order so it makes sense. Otherwise, Bob will be paying uh, for, for a transaction that he doesn't yet have. Um, so yeah, side effects make it kind of hard to define the state. And there are some blockchains that still use it. For example, Cardano. And it actually, it's much easier to do it with functional uh, languages because of this exact um, uh, problem. Side effects are uh, different things, right? So, and then it's also because like Turing is uh, not happy. Like, uh, it's all good when you can put a limit to block size. Uh, let's just call it Ethereum cache. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, and then you, you can, and then just call it a day. That's just okay. I'm just. Put a limit to block size. There's this number of transactions. Once the size hits a certain limit, then it's over. Uh, but then, how about like programmability? Like uh, Bitcoin works because there's a very 
uh, a limited amount of competition you can do it. It's a very, it's an intentionally very limited um, stack-based language. But for Ethereum, you want something that's actually truly complete. Um, and then the UX, like UX is a nightmare. I don't know. People use Bitcoin on exchanges and it looks easy, but if you actually try to use Bitcoin, I don't know if you did, uh, just don't. But because you have like four different addresses, because they just don't understand each other, and then wallets don't see each other. Like some of them don't 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 understand Taproot. Others, are, it, it's a mess. And, and yeah, uh, there's a solution, Lightning Network, which is even worse. Okay, so um, it like U UX for everything UTXO based is hard. That doesn't mean it's awful because, for example, Cardano works fine, I guess. But like, it is it is generally much much more much harder than just using the account based model. Uh, so enter this concept of gas, um, gas, right? uh, which also kind of deserves some. I mean, uh, gas is just this is just not the, the thing. You need, I need to explain what it is, right? Um, so I'm explaining gas is kind of core core component. Gas is what allows for you to make any kind of computation because every single uh, opcode, every single um, yeah operation of your of your virtual machine has a price, and so your validator can determine what, how, if if the computation is too complete, and how much it will cost, and then everyone else can just go uh, at that at that given timestamp. And I'm pointing the timestamp as very important here. It can attest that at that specific timestamp, block block number, that state is the result of, of the computation. So um, just to go a little bit beyond this, what uh, is a gas-powered virtual machine? This should be not very um, should be not be new for you. Like you have block N, which is has the world state. It's actually called world state. Uh, and this is how you know it, how wallet knows it, how you know it knows it. And then you just add the transactions. Like some people just pay an absurd amount of gas to get their latest shit done and everything. And then you compute the new world state. And everyone does the same thing. So you're guaranteed to have the new state in every node. That's how the account based model works. You are timestamping. The timestamp of this block and 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 plus one is not like the actual clock. When did it happen? It's not even. It's, it's not even important. Right? You can have actual different times. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter when the, uh, a new block was produced and, and finalized. So again, seems like we solved it all. Like what is suddenly a problem? Well, privacy, right? That's that's the problem, right? You don't have privacy because if everyone everyone needs to compute the next world state, then you, everyone needs to know what the inputs are, right? I mean, it's just like if if I'm five five dollars and someone pays me two dollars, and everyone needs to to see that someone paid me two dollars, otherwise we will not reach the same the same balance in the end, um, and so that's why sometimes it's just not useful, like. If you scream out loud every single transaction as public and say, here's what happened, then maybe it's not that useful. Um, and then, yeah, if you try to apply it to the real world, you'll see that maybe it's the solution to global peace, or maybe the real or real in surreal state. Uh, I don't know, I probably that one. Um, but yeah, this is the point of my of what I'm trying to tell you here, is that it doesn't agree with the real world, and that's why it's it's not, it's not valuable. So privacy, it's actually a big deal. That's that's not, that's something like, I mean, this is that's this little book. Um, yeah, no one no one cares about this book. It's just the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that says that you can't be subject to arbitrary interference to your privacy, family, home, or correspondence. And so yeah. It's just not me that says this is actual right that everyone alive has. So going back to basics and asking again the question, who are you? Well, it depends. <laughs> because if you first thing you need to do is to define what is present. Uh, what is the concept of 
uh, now. Uh, now that you've given up, because uh, it's kind of hard, you always have to define yourself as an entity in the past in order to even consider your existence, your existence, right? The present is just this kind of border between the past and the future, right? It just goes straight from past to future. So you need to define a point in the past in order to even consider the, the present. And the same goes with the future. Like if you if you pick a future, you can, uh, future you can reason about. You don't. You can't define your own self, your own entity in the future. Like you don't know if you're gonna reach in the right in the meantime. Maybe right. But what you need to do is to define a measurement of time. You can say like, uh, in a few minutes you're not gonna be here, right? You can you can. <laughs> you need to define this future um, for your calculation. And then this is the social understandability, the, the social, uh, yeah, the understandability of uh, of time. But um, actually, not, nothing stops you from measuring time according to the rotation of the Earth. Actually, we actually have to add leap seconds and everything because it's not, it doesn't, it's not equal. Um, so yeah, but I mean, good luck, right? If, if you if you say no, no, my day is based on whatever different calendar is not based on the rotation of the Earth. Um, I mean, good luck, but you need to agree with everyone else on what is a clock, what is a timestamp machine. So what you are is you take so, right? Uh, because like a clock just goes tic-tac, no thing. The tic-tac is actually just an ancient baby learning division, division, division by 60. Um, and then you realize that Actually, the concept of the time being the same at all the other places is incredibly recent. Uh, like you could travel to Amsterdam and your wristwatch wasn't wasn't valid anymore because the town had its own sense of time. You're know, like, how is this possible? How can you how can you leave one place and be ten ten and then you reach to Amsterdam after one hour and it's it's like eleven? Doesn't work, right? It, it, you did have to agree with globally what the clock is. Um, and so this is what the Brits did. They, they, they define what, what time is it? Like, what time is it? At, at a given point, everywhere in the world, what time is it? Uh, so clock is also just a timestamp machine. So you are, and you take, so you are uh, some, uh, some definition of a being that exists in this agreed time. So if we don't agree in what the clock is, then I can't really define myself, or you can define yourself. Um, so why why are you an inject soul? Like you can say physics physics can say yeah you have a deterministic position velocity, but I don't know what your position in velocity. I know that you're in front of me, right? So you can represent yourself in inject soul if you choose a timestamp. You say I have this timestamp at this time, at this point in time, this day, I am in this place with <coughs> the format the past, right? Uh, the same with biology, I mean, you could say your blood pressure, your, your calorie, I mean, you can even share that with some, you can share it privately with your uh, smartwatch, whatever, but I don't need to know that, right? But you are defined by your, by your blood pressure, and you are defined by your metabolism, by your uh, glucose levels, everything, so you can represent that in UTXO if you choose a timestamp to measure it. So what I say is that your brain also holds a ton of memories. Some of them are actually private, and some of them are actually changing the world as, as you know it. For example, a child that is not yet born has almost all the secrets, right? We, we, try, we try to go and see how you do heart beating and everything, but almost everything is secret. Like, nobody knows what a child is, but something that's secret, it's private to the, to the, to the unborn child. But yet it does change the world around it, right? When you're having a baby, like your family says, whoa, right? It, this, this is crazy. This person, this little baby, has all the secrets, and they change the world as, as it is. And you could represent that as you take so, if you choose a timestamp to measure it. So this is the part where you're saying, you are from Aztec. Why are you talking about this if you're from Aztec? Well, I can say exactly the same thing. You can represent yourself in UTXO if you choose a timestamp to measure it. And so, who are you? 
you are chasing state in space-time centers. Um, that's basically who you are. You have some parts of you which are public. I can, I know who you look like. I know how you look like. I can see you, but they are private. There are, there are memories, there are secrets that you hold that affect the world around you, and I don't have to know them. Some of them are totally private. Some of them are shared. Some of them, when I mean secrets, it's not like something that it's a complete secret. Oh, nobody can. It's just things that some, even you may not know it, right? And so, who are, who are you? You are just this representation. And if the blockchain doesn't do this, then it's not useful. You have to keep your secrets when you work on a global ledger. So it seems like we have built this very expensive clock, which is Ethereum, and like, how can we make a better clock? Well, how can we make a, a clock that actually holds your secrets? So I'm going to go back to the UTXO. Um, because they are amazing for privacy, right? You can, you, you can timestamp things, you can say, yeah, at this point in time, um, the hash of my state is this one, and as long as everyone agrees with the timestamp, with this time, timestamp machine, you'd say, oh, like, um, this is who I am at this specific mm -hmm. point in time. Again, time needs to be agreed upon, that's the big deal. If this is just a clock, we're just building a clock, right? So UTXOs are amazing for this, right? Because you can do that in privacy. So some people are like, okay, let's just, let's just okay, I'm going to encode myself as uh, having a position, uh, velocity, having whatever skin color, and everything. I could keep it in a in a, in a market tree, and then I update that if I need to update and. Yeah, but then you will be leaking that uh, that something happened to you because uh, you could see on the ledger, see oh this there's this this state that's sh that has changed in that leaf. So you could you could basically almost dock someone and try to understand what exactly happened to that person, and it's very very easy to actually locate yourself. And so that's not good enough for for us. That's just we wanted more. So. Um, yeah, you are recorded with your secrets in real life. So if you can if you can represent yourself in Aztec, you have to re represent yourself with these secrets. Like you don't know you need to know I hate broccoli, but I do hate broccoli, right? So if I'm gonna if I'm going to a meal now, maybe that at that point I'll share with you and say, there's no broccoli, right? But at this point it's just that's just private information. I can't represent myself if I if I don't have that privacy. I could go, uh, I could have dinner with you and then suddenly, suddenly create this notion that I hate broccoli. No, that's already part of me, right? So, but in order to advance state, you need to compute the whole thing. You, need, you still need to compute the whole thing. So how can you do that? And that's where zero knowledge proofs come. come. Um, you need to shout these UGXOs you don't, but you don't want to leak what you are doing. You don't want to say, "I changed this state in this leaf in this Merkle tree." You want to say something happened to some contract. Uh, some, some, someone did something to some contract, um, and for that you need the privacy. So, I'm a little bit philosophical, so I'm going to give you a very specific example, and that will probably help. Which is Froglin. Froglin is a working working progress game on Um I don't know if you like this kind of games like Pokemon Go and other things. Uh, you can capture, you can breed, you can you can fight with this uh, with these beings, which are a mixture between frogs and goblins. Um, and you can use like some kind of a magic to gather mechanic and mechanics where you have an attack and a health, and then when you win a fight, you just uh, remove the the value of the health from uh, the, the value of the attack from the health of your opponent. So pretty basic at the attack defense uh, mechanism. But <coughs> the point is that all the stats are kept private even when you are fighting. So this is the source code. If you are interested in looking into it, it's just work working place, uh, working progress. But um, so here's here's a question: like if you are encoding these problems, these beings as UGX souls because they own a state and they own their secrets and you move with their secrets in time, how do you prove 
your stalker has survived an attack without revealing the current health. So what you can do is something like, oh, you have an attacking player and a defending player. The, defending, uh, the attacking player has a problem. It's now ephemeral. It's something that, I mean, it's just a new text, so it's just a note. It's just like you take a snapshot of yourself now and then just use that for moving advancing state until someone agrees on a clock and then you're in a new state. And so you create this ephemeral attacker, you encrypt it to your defender, and then the defender can make the change, the, the change in state on their own device. This is the big deal, this is where the decay comes from. So Aztec is not about the ZK, Aztec is about being able to represent the world in a useful way. ZK is just the way we use it to do it. And it just happens that we are very good at that, but that's right. It's, it's, it's not, not the important thing. So you now have a, 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 another ephemeral attacker that has a new state. You don't have to reveal what, what changed in that state. You just say, yeah, I can prove to you, I can prove to the network that uh, and the network can verify via zero knowledge proof that the state, has, the state has changed, that this frog now has less health than it had before. And now you have, you can equip that uh, uh, frog to your attacking, to your other opponent, and so on and so forth. And here's some code, like uh, it's just some pseudo code. So I'm gonna go over it. I don't know if this one uh, has a, um, okay, cool. Uh, no, nobody sees it. Anyway, um, here, uh, this is just pseudo code, right? I don't know if this probably would run. Um, but you have this problem. Let's just say that there's an attack and health, but again, I could tell that about you. You, do, you can define yourself in whatever field you want. Uh, but in this case, it's just an attack health. And then you have this Aztec node also, which is another UTXO model, let's say, um, that also has an attack and, uh, and health. And basically, when you start a fight, you just, you just create uh, this ephemeral attacker, and then you broadcast it. Again, all of this is private. You're just broadcasting a note and say, something happened. Uh, you equip this, um, this fighting frogling, this ephemeral frogling, this ephemeral uh, being to your opponent, and you broadcast it. And only your opponent can listen, under ev or better, everyone, everyone listens, but only your opponent can decrypt it. Um, and so, and then your, your opponent will fight it. It just creates your node, the node that was being encrypted to you, by you, to you that only you can decrypt. Uh, then you calculate the result of the result of the fight. You basically nullify, you kind of burn the the, the ephemeral attacker, just like you would burn the UTXO uh, Bitcoin transaction, the node in your wallet. And then you create a new one and saying this is the result of the fight, and this is the new attacker. And all of this is being proved. So at the end, there's a zero, zero knowledge proof that goes to the to the network. So you broadcast it again to everyone else. Um, and so this is how something very, very, um, let's just say, I mean, something that is a kind of philosophical is actually very real once you start writing out the contracts. And this is just not possible unless you can keep the secrets. So all right, like keep your secrets, but right? um, just just keep in mind that you cannot forget privacy. You, you cannot offload offload your privacy. You can ask you can ask someone else to do it for you. So you have you, you can hire someone to sleep it cheap post for you. You have to do these things yourself, right? Um, people are like, oh, you, I hold your you I hold your state. You, you send me your private inputs. I prove it for you. There's a prover running somewhere that does the proof for you. No, no, that that's just not that that won't work. You have to do your computation in your phone. It needs to be client side, like server side. We're all champions. I just put up an uh, um, I just put up an AWS machine with 256 gigs of RAM, and I'm good to go. But that that will leak your privacy. So actually, I actually even like fail. How can we onboard the next billion? How they say, when everything we do is made public? It just doesn't make any sense. It does not relate with the current world as it is. 
And if you want something that to be useful, then it needs to match with the world as we know it. So if you want to something done, you have to do it yourself. And this is the goal of Elastic. Private things on Elastic is your uh, responsibility. You write the contracts. You manage private state. You run your computation. And so there's this private execution environment, which is a piece of software that runs on your device and is going to prove the huge Excel transaction that the state change that I just mentioned, when your blood pressure changes, it's still secret, but you can prove it for medical reasons, for example. You need to keep your privacy. I don't want to know what's your blood, blood pressure. I don't need to, right? Unless you I'm not saying my doctor wants to share it to me, that's fine, right? But, and it can still affect the world around you, right? So it's important to be in the ledger. Then there's the public side, which is all about succeedness, making things uh, smaller and smaller until in the end you just have one proof that goes on on L1. And that's that's pretty much it. Like thanks for um, thanks for being here. Um, uh, so here's some links from me. Um, this is the Discord. Uh, you can like zoom in on your phone if you um, if you want to join the Aztec Discord. It's a very technical uh, forum. Uh, the Aztec documentation: how to write contracts. Uh, here's my X Twitter, how whatever you like to call it, my Telegram. And that's it. I don't know if you have, if we have time for questions or not. Sure. Uh, maybe one question. Maybe one question. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have a question regarding a tweet that you made in March. <laughs> and then you the define web for read, write, own, and prove. Yeah. So I'm almost a little bit confused. How, how do you differentiate ownership and the proving part? Yeah, I mean, the, the concept of web 1 web 2 is also very difficult to define, and web 2 web 3 is also very difficult to define. Like, some people don't agree that blockchain is web 3. Uh, and so I would accept that maybe you say, yeah, I, I can sign my own stuff, I can own my own stuff, and so that's, that's the same as proving, but that's not true, right? Because if you own something that everyone knows about it, then you just need to prove that you own that. But with proving, it's different, because you can prove something that is private. You can say, I can prove that I can prove my nationality uh, by saying I am um, a, a national of the EU, and you don't need to know from where. Um, and I can I can prove that I'm over 18 years old. I'm, I'm just 19, I, I can see. But yeah, uh, but yeah, you, you you can you can do something like that, and that's something you can't do in Web, web 3, and that's why I, I I came up with this idea of Web 4. But I really don't. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna fight for it. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you very much once again. Thank you.